Hello everyone, Tristan Fenholt here and welcome to another daily message. You know, the Christmas season is upon us right now. You don't have to go very far to be reminded that Christmas is upon us. In fact, you might even already have a lot of your Christmas decorations set up inside your home. You might even have Christmas decorations set up outside your home with Christmas lights or whatever it may, may be. Even if you don't have your Christmas decorations out, uh, your neighbors may have theirs out where they might have Christmas lights on their house. And even if you're going out, I know many of us are uh, limiting how much we're getting out these days because of uh, COVID-19. But even when you are going out, you might go to the grocery store. You're going to see aisles filled now with Christmas candy that have all the holiday Christmas colors. And then there's Santa Claus and you're going to see, you know, little Christmas trees for sale. And even if you are just driving around town, you're going to see the Christmas lights on buildings and, and homes and such. And maybe even watching television, you're going to start seeing the commercials advertising, you know, this purchase or this purchase and everything centered around holiday giving, you know, and there is really something special about Christmas and a very special element of Christmas is in the giving of gifts. Giving of gifts is a very uh, big part of Christmas and it's a big part of what's in all of our hearts. You see, I've rarely met anybody, in fact, I don't even know that I've ever met anybody who doesn't like to give gifts, that doesn't like. Now, I'm not saying that everybody has the capacity to always give and to always give, you know, uh, nice gifts to their friends and their colleagues and their, you know, all of their family members and, and such. And maybe you might even be limited on how much you can buy even your own family, your own spouse, your own kids, but there's something inside of all of us that we, we want to give. We want to be a blessing to others. It's in our nature. And I remember when I was a kid, Christmas morning was my favorite morning in, uh, of the whole year. In fact, I had a hard time sleeping the night before because of the excitement of what I would see the next morning. My parents made it really fun as well. I'm not going to get into the fun stories, but uh, they made it really fun. And I remember waking up and seeing the gifts. And when I was opening up the gifts, I couldn't wait to find out what it is that I got. You know, and if I received something that I was really looking forward to, man, it just made my day. I couldn't wait to share with my friends um, or my cousins that would come over later that day just to have fun and play. And, you know, it was really special. And now that I'm a father and I have small children, I see the same excitement with them. They love seeing gifts and wanting to know <laughs> what is it, you know, and they open it up. And if it's something they really enjoy or will enjoy, Man, they light up. There's something about receiving gifts. But even more than receiving gifts, something I've recognized now that I'm much older and have kids of my own, it truly is more of a blessing to give than it is to receive. You see, my kids, when they're opening up gifts, it's all about receiving, and that is just makes their day. And they're blessed by it, and I love to be a blessing. But you know who I believe is more blessed? I believe it's me and my wife who are being a blessing to our kids, that are able to give them uh, whatever it is that we were able to give them this year, or whether it was for their birthday or whatever it may be. But this Christmas season, many people are focused on gifts and giving of gifts. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because that is in our nature to give. And it's in our nature to give because we've been created in the image of God. You know, Jesus says something very uh, profound in Matthew chapter number 7, and he says in verse number 9, What man is there among you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? Listen to verse 11. If you then, being evil, in other words, being imperfect human beings, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, listen to this, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask Him? So listen again what He says here. If you, being an imperfect human being, you want to give good gifts to your children, how much more will our Father in heaven give good things to those who ask Him? In other words, you know what this is saying? Is just as it is in our nature, that we want to give to our kids, we have a Father in heaven who wants to give to His kids, and that's me and you. You see, not everybody is able 
to buy as gifts everything that they would like to be able to give. I know I certainly can't. And I'm not saying anything, you know, about provision or greed or materialism, but, you know, we all have our limits. We all have our budgets. And we all have also what's appropriate to give. You know, you don't want to spoil, you know, people, you know, spoil your kids and such. But many times the the limitation of, of our funds or our budget or our finances, we hit a certain wall where it's like, boy, I would love to be able to give just a little bit more. And, and even if you can't give, there's something in your heart that says, oh, I want to be able to give just a little bit more. I think we all can relate. We all can relate to this. We all want to stretch and give the very best. But we hit a certain wall. See, why is that? Because we're created in the image of God. But let me tell you something about God. God doesn't reach limits. <laughs> Isn't that good? God doesn't reach, um, uh, you know, budget concerns or constraints. No, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He has um, all the riches on earth and in heaven. He has all provision. He has no limits. And listen, God is saying, if you know how to give good gifts to your children and you want to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who has no limitations give good things to those who ask him? You see, I want to talk to you about this today. Good gifts from God. Good gifts from God. In this Christmas season, we might not be able to, we might not receive, you know, every gift, you know, from all these people that we might want, or we might not even be able to give everything that we would like to other people. But we can receive good gifts directly from God. That is the heart of our Father. I want to talk to you about good gifts from God. In fact, I want to take you on a little journey through the Word and show you that our God is a very loving and giving God. In fact, in John 3, 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's a verse many of us are familiar with, but listen to it again. For God so loved the world that He gave. You see, God is a very loving and a giving God. See, He gives because He loves. And let me tell you something, God loves you. And God wants to give because He loves you. Whatever it is that you have need of, God God wants to give. In fact, it says God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Jesus is the best gift that you and I can ever receive. In fact, in this Christmas season, even when you're seeing Christmas trees and Santa Claus and you're seeing the commercialization of Christmas, may it be a reminder that Christmas is the manifestation of God's love. Did you know that God so loved the world He gave us His Son? See, Christmas is the celebration of His Son coming to this earth. May it be a reminder that God is a loving and a giving God. God so loved the world that He gave us the greatest gift, Jesus Christ. And listen, it doesn't matter what you may receive in the natural. Whether you get your big screen TV, you get your sound bar, you get your iPhone, you know, whatever it is that you really just think, boy, that's an extravagant gift. You get a new car, even, whatever it could be. You spoil yourself. You spend a little extra money, maybe even on yourself or your spouse or somebody. See, These gifts are all wonderful, but there is no gift better than Jesus. Salvation is the greatest gift. If you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want to encourage you, receive Jesus. Open up your heart to Him. Confess Him as Lord and uh, get in the Word. But give your life to Jesus. Jesus is the greatest gift that any of us can ever receive. But I want to show you something else as we go into this journey. In fact, my iPad just locked me out, so let me go back into it. Listen to Romans 8.32, right on the heels of this. Let me, let me say this. God gave us the best gift, Jesus Christ, but when we receive Jesus, God doesn't stop giving there. Receiving Jesus is only the beginning of the good gifts that God wants to give you. Listen to Romans 8.32. He, <coughs> excuse me, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Listen to this. How shall he not with Jesus also freely give us all things? Listen to what that says. 
If God did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, in other words, He gave us His Son. If God didn't hold back His daily delight, His only begotten Son, His beloved Son, if God didn't spare Him, but gave Him to us, listen, how shall He not with Jesus also freely give us all things? What's that mean? If we've received Jesus, God doesn't stop giving there. It's only the beginning. God wants to continue to give. Isn't that good? How shall he not with Jesus also freely give us all things? In fact, the Bible says in Psalm 84, 11, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. No good thing. What's that mean? God doesn't want to withhold any good things from me or from you. Psalm 34, 11 says, those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. See, I'm talking about good gifts from God. And here's what we know. God so loved the world, He gave us His only begotten Son. And if God gave us His Son, once we've received Jesus, God will also freely give us all things. See, there's plenty of gifts out there and promises out there that God wants to give you. Psalm 103 is an example. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits who forgives all your iniquities. If you have sinned, receive forgiveness, who heals all your diseases. He'll take care of your physical body. He will heal your physical body, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Uh, That's emotional uh, well-being and such. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. What's that mean? Material things. In other words, God will forgive our sins. He'll heal our bodies. That's our physical bodies. He will heal us emotionally, loving kindness and tender mercies. Our soul will be restored and refreshed. And He'll satisfy our mouth with good things. That's material things. See, God wants to bless us. See, in this season of Christmas and giving gifts, I want you to recognize that our God is a loving and a giving God. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things that you're concerned about will be added to you. Not that the concerns will be added, but the things that you have need of in life, the things that you might be concerned about because you don't have this or you have lack here, God wants to provide. What is the Bible saying? The Bible is saying that we have a good God who wants to give who wants to give. And listen, he's not limited by budget. He's not limited by any type of constraints. Our God loves you. He wants to give you salvation if you've not received it. And with salvation, he wants to freely give you all things. If you need wisdom, ask God for wisdom and he'll give you wisdom. Man, our God wants to give you whatever it is that you need this Christmas season. If you have needs in your marriage, God wants to give you whatever it is that you need for your marriage to go to the next level. God loves you. If you need financial provision, God wants to take care of you financially. He'll lead you in wisdom. He'll guide your steps. He will uh, instruct you on what you need to do. Sometimes a gift is wisdom. Sometimes it's not that we don't make enough money. It's that we don't spend or steward our money the right way. And sometimes the best gift is wisdom, instruction, like, oh, and you just make a small adjustment and it unlocks things. See, God wants to unlock things for you and for me, and he wants to do it this Christmas season. You know, Jesus said in Luke 12, 32, he said, do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Notice, it's his good pleasure. In other words, God is not reluctant to give. It's his good pleasure to give. And he'll give you the whole kingdom. He's not going to hold anything back. It's all saying the same thing. And let me wrap up with this. So what do we do? Jesus said very plainly in Matthew 7, 7 and 8, Ask and it will be given to you. What's that mean? Ask God. Come to God with your needs. Kind of like, you know, when kids, you know, are little, you know, and maybe they might believe in Santa Claus or something, or, you know, maybe uh, you're not introducing them to Santa Claus, but maybe you just have them write down a Christmas list. You want to know what it is your kids want, so they're writing down a list, and that helps you to know what it is that you want to give to them. Well, God is similar, except that, of course, God knows that we want. God knows that we have need of. But listen to what the Bible says, ask. In other words, 
Make a list of what it is you need and come to the Lord and ask Him. If you need breakthrough in your marriage, ask the Lord for breakthrough in your marriage. If you need breakthrough in your emotions, ask the Lord for breakthrough there emotionally. If you need breakthrough with finances, if you need provision, if you need a car, whatever it might be. You're looking for a bigger home or a place to live that accommodates your family more, uh, a raise at, you're at work or a promotion at work. Some of you, you know, you don't want a promotion, you just want a raise. Some of you, you know, you want a promotion, you want to go to the next level. Ask God. Come to the Lord. Some of you, it might be physical healing in your body. Here's what Jesus said. Ask and it will be given. Then he says this, for everyone who asks receives. Everyone who asks receives. And then he gets to the verse that I quoted earlier. If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children. In other words, when your children really want something, it does pull on your heart that you want to be able to give, even if you are unable to give because of a certain financial constraint or whatever it may be. In your heart, there's something in us where we want to give. We want to give. And Jesus says, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those, listen, who ask Him? Listen, not those who need it, those who ask Him. Those who ask Him. See, God knows that we have need of all kinds of things, but what do we need to do? Ask Him. Make our requests known to God, the Bible says in the book of Philippians. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Let's let our requests be made known to God. This Christmas season, as we're, as we're giving gifts, just know God is a loving God and He is a giving God. What I want to encourage you to do right now is Come before the Lord and ask. Let your request be made known to God. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, and I thank you for your word. I thank you, first of all, that you are a loving and a giving God. You so love the world that you gave us, your only begotten Son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And Lord, I also know that once we have received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we receive salvation, the greatest gift, that any of us could ever receive, even if there were no other gifts that we would ever receive from you. Salvation is so big and so important that that alone, we would be so thankful because we can spend eternity with you in heaven and that would be enough. Oh, thank you, Lord. We know that would be enough. But because you're such a loving and a giving God, you do not stop by sending us Jesus and giving us salvation. According to what your word says in the book of Hebrews, if we have received Jesus, you will also freely give us all things because you didn't hold him back from us. So Lord, I pray that whatever it is that we have need of, and those that are watching this right now, whatever it is that we may have need of in life, whatever it may be, we come before you. And will you just come before the Lord? Let your request be made known to God. Let God know what it is you need. Be specific right now. Name some things out to the Lord. Lord, for those that need promotion, we ask for promotion. Those that need a raise in finances, may there be a raise in finances. Lord, those that need wisdom, we ask you for wisdom, Lord. We ask you for instruction and guidance. Lord, we ask for breakthrough for those that need breakthrough in their emotions and in their mind. Breakthrough in marriages, Lord. We ask you to strengthen marriages. We ask you, Lord, to strengthen uh, family units, Lord. Lord, those might even be asking on behalf of other people for salvation for their kids or salvation for their parents. We come before you, Lord, and let our request be made known to you. Lord, I thank you that you are a loving and a giving God. So this Christmas season, though there might be personal lack in certain areas, you have no lack. So we come to you and, and know that it is your good pleasure to give. So Lord, we receive good gifts from you knowing that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from our Father. So Lord, we receive good gifts from you this Christmas, this season. We let a request be made known to you and we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching today. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos. And if you'd like to start a house church, either with The Rock, a four-square church, 
or with Solid Lives, our global discipleship and church planning ministry, go to one of those websites. Go to therock.com for The Rock or solidlives.com for Solid Lives. Click on House Churches and fill out the interest form. We'd love to partner with you to advance the kingdom of God.